The Battlefront Network, giving you your daily bills of Battlefront content. Don't forget to enter our May the 4th giveaway, guys, for you to have a chance to win some awesome prizes. The competition closes June 29th, and more information is in the description below. Enjoy the video, guys. Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Tom, and you're watching the Battlefront Network today. Thank you for tuning in. So, I've been away from the channel for a short amount of time, but I'm back now and I have some lovely information on Star Wars Battlefront for all you awesome people out there. First up, we have the news, and the customization side of things for the game has been recently mentioned and talked about, and the official EA Star Wars Twitter account has confirmed the ability to select various character heads, loadouts, and emotes to the character customization feature in the game. This is really interesting as we've already seen several different species make an appearance in the cinematic in-engine reveal trailer, suggesting that we can change the species of our characters using this feature. Now the species that have actually been confirmed so far as to the date of this video is Human, Solustan and Ishitib. Hopefully more species will be inc included alongside these as I would love to battle it out on all the different environments as different species and races. Players will be able to customise their loadouts to suit their specific playstyle. This way of working has been put in place instead of the traditional class system. There will be no iron sights on the weapons, we will only be able to aim down scopes. The emotes that have been mentioned as being part of the customization feature have not yet been officially explained, but we suspect there will be in-game items that appear mid-match or maybe at the end of a multiplayer match. You will receive two exclusive emotes if you purchase the deluxe edition of the game. The second piece of news we've been treated to is the confirmation of an active weathering effect in the game. Now, Electronic Arts released an article that explains the work that has gone into creating the graphics of Star Wars Battlefront. Part of this article talks about a weathering effect that will be added into the game, which makes me extremely happy. And the section of text in the article that talks about this goes as follows. A lot of work has been done on the so-called weathering of the materials. Say you're battling amongst the lava fields on Sullust. The armour will be affected by ash and soot as you're playing. When you're on Hoth, the snow and frost will build up over time. Weathering is also contextual. So if you stepped in mud on Endor and then walk in the water, the mud will wash away. You can see what looks like an example of this weathering effect in the DICE developer diary footage. Here we see a stormtrooper on either the planet Tatooine or the planet Jakku. His armour looks affected by the sandy environment. I'm extremely happy that DICE has included a feature like this in the game, as it will certainly add to the realism they are trying to achieve with the models and environments. Being in a firefight with your character's armour or clothing being affected by the sand, mud or ash would make you feel more part of the battle that is going on around you. We've also been given some awesome new images showing off the game, the first one being of the X-Wing vehicle in-game model, which is looking absolutely marvellous. The detail on the vehicle, courtesy of the photogrammetry system that DICE is using, is just phenomenal, and I can't wait to fly them, or shoot them out of the sky with a TIE fighter. <laughs> the second image is of the planet Solus, which shows two Star Destroyers looming over the rocky lava-filled plains. Star Destroyers have been confirmed to be objectives in particular game modes, and we're assuming they will play a substantial part in the fighter squadron mode. We have another image showing the DL-44 blaster which was used by Han Solo, along with the text, keep it on the DL-44. So, considering that Han Solo's blaster will be a usable weapon in the game, that the Millennium Falcon will be a flyable vehicle, and the EA Star Wars has posted this picture, we can only rightly assume that, I'd be very surprised if he wasn't, Han Solo will be a playable character in the game. But I guess we'll have to wait for some more news on that on June 15th. The final image is of Darth Vader, and we know that he'll be a playable character in the game, and will effectively act as a boss of the match with different abilities at his disposal. DICE has been able to implement the fine detail of all the armour, weapons and environments being included in Battlefront, and Darth Vader is looking awesome, and we can't wait to play as him or see him in action in the game. Another piece of news revolves around the character C-3PO, now, the actor Anthony Daniels, who is best known for his work as C-3PO in the Star Wars films, posted a tweet saying, One day it's the hilarious Yoda Chronicles, the next, the astounding Battlefront. Just the yin and yang of being C-3PO at the microphone. From reading this, it looks like the actor is doing some fresh voice acting work as C-3PO for use in the game. Now, since EA has a licensing agreement with Disney, 
DICE has access to basically every Star Wars resource, from weapons and models to the actual sounds using the films. So it's good knowing that they aren't just reusing all the old material and are actually implementing fresh new recorded stuff into the game. In the description of the game on Origin, it says that as players, we'll be able to encounter a variety of beloved characters from the original trilogy, such as C-3PO and R2-D2. So seeing these two things makes me even more excited to play the game. And the final piece of news is some answers to some frequently asked questions by fans about Star Wars Battlefront and Electronic Arts released those in an article type way so you can find a link to that in the description below. And the answers to one of the questions actually give some more details about the kind of environments and maps we can expect from the planet Hoth in the game. And the text says, For example, you won't just be fighting on the icy plains of Hoth but also in the Rebel base and in the ice caves. Now, in Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2, we could actually already do that on the Hoth map. And in Battlefront 2, you could play as a Wampa and go in the caves and in the Rebel, ba in the Rebel base, of course. That was awesome. And uh, it would be a shame uh, if they didn't include any Wampas or things like that. Uh, maybe like a separate game mode in a DLC or something. But maybe they are separating Hoth into uh, three separate maps. And that would be a good idea because, of course, they have the different amount of players on different game modes. For example, eight players or 40 players, which is the max. So 40 players would work with the big, the big plane area and the eight players would work with the, the actual caves in the, in the Rebel base. So that's awesome news, and I cannot wait to see what they have for us on June 15th. It's going to be awesome. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I've been Tom, and I'll see you next time.